Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. So tomorrow's Halloween so I thought today I would show you how to paint a spooky jack-o'-lantern and a ghost. So let's do it! Okay, so to start I'm just gonna go through my materials. I have my Arches watercolor paper cut into smaller rectangles. <laughs> I have a piece of cardboard that I will be taping one of these papers onto. Um, we're going to be using a lot of water, so I just want to tape it down. And it's easier to tape it on a piece of cardboard than your table, so you can actually remove it and work on something else. I have my Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolors in my palette. I have my Princeton snap brushes. I have a size 4 and a size 16. My water, my paper towel. I also have this Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White Ink. If you have white gouache or even white watercolor, um, that will work too, and a pencil, and we're ready to go. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is tape down one of my pieces of paper to this piece of cardboard. Okay, so now that it's taped down, we can do the background. We're gonna be doing kind of like a spooky background, and then once it's all dry, we're gonna put a ghost in the foreground. And while that first layer is drying, we'll work on the jack-o'-lantern. So to start, take your big brush and you're just gonna make a light wash over the whole piece of paper, except for a circle here, which will be the moon in the background. Okay, so take, you can take, well, you can take a light wash or you can do the dark color. I'm just trying to lay down where I want my wet layer to go. And you can always do this on front of a Halloween card or frame it for some Halloween decor around your house. And I'm actually going to leave some space at the bottom for the ground after that we'll do. Okay, and we're just going to do the sky right now. So I'm going to take some indigo and Payne's gray. And I'm just going to lather on that color for the dark night sky. Okay, and it doesn't have to be even because some of those dark or light, darker or lighter bits can act as clouds. <clears throat> we just want a nice dark night sky. Okay. All right. So there we go. Now I'm going to take some black and I'm going to do the bottom here. And it can touch the sky part too. If it bleeds into it, it's fine. It's just the background. We'll go over it sharper a bit later, just laying down that first color. Okay. You can even do some hills in the background if you want. It could be uneven ground. Whatever you want. Okay. Okay. So we're going to let that layer dry. And while that's drying, we're going to work on a jack-o'-lantern. Okay. So I'm going to take my second piece of Arches paper here. And this time we're going to need a pencil because we're going to sketch it out. Unlike how I was doing the freehand one before. So sketching it out, you're going to do the same kind of thing where you make an oval for that middle section. Okay. Just a really light sketch because you're going to want to Erase some of those pencil lines after. An oval to one side, an oval to the other side, again, and again. Okay, and I'm going to do my stem coming up and just a couple of those bumps behind. Okay, and now you are going to paint, and by paint, I mean draw <laughs> the face of the jack-o'-lantern okay okay so we're gonna do more of a spookier jack-o'-lantern so i am going to do a line coming down this way a little u-shape 
and then another line. And then you're just gonna make a bigger U shape curving it, okay? Same thing, line, U shape, line, bigger U shape. Now, for these eyes, you're gonna wanna see the inside of that pumpkin to make it a little bit more 3D. So I'm gonna add another curve like that and another curve on the inside like that, okay? Same thing with this one, go out a little bit more. Curve, curve. I actually might make that other one bigger. So these are supposed to kind of act like the pupils of the eyes. Okay, so you might want to make it a bit bigger. So you're going to put that curve on the inner corner. Still too close. <laughs> okay, I can do this. There we go. Okay. The eyes. And you can do a nose if you want. You don't have to. I'm just going to do a mouth. So this guy's going to be kind of like, it's like a happy, creepy grin. He's going to have one tooth like that. And then a big scoop underneath. And because it's rounded, that's why you see the inside of the pumpkin on that side and that side, okay? So you're gonna do the same thing on the corners of the mouth. Another kind of curve in. And actually I should have made that curve a bit bigger coming out. Okay, hold on. And then the inside of that tooth. It's on this side of the pumpkin. So you'll see this side of the inner bit, okay? So there's your pumpkin. I'm just gonna erase these middle lines so they're not as visible to when we start painting, okay? And you're gonna paint the same way we did with our other pumpkin, but you're just gonna go around the face, okay? So I'm gonna take my brush <clears throat> in my size 10, I'm gonna take some orange and I'm gonna go along those lines of the curves again, going around those facial features. And I'm just gonna paint it in. I'm not gonna add actually a bit of burnt umber to my burnt or to my orange to make it a bit of a darker orange. I go around those sides like I used to with my other pumpkins too in my other tutorials. Okay. So we're leaving that center a lot lighter. And what you can actually even do is go in with just brown. We're gonna make this guy kind of ghoulish looking. So I'm adding some darkness to those curves in that pumpkin. Okay, like so. All right. Now we are going to do the other curve like that. I'm going to fill it in. And it can touch the line of the previous section. If it bleeds into each other, that's okay. Just try not to use too much water so if it does bleed, it's not like something drastic. Okay, you can always go over those lines again. Okay, go over there. <clears throat> And then just with the brown. Like that. Just 
going over this one again. Just make sure it's wet if you're going over them again, okay? Okay. <clears throat> Next one. Sorry for all the throat clearing and the heavy breathing or mm, sniffling again. I'm going to take off some of that color and I'm just going to blend it in this highlighted area just a bit because it looked a little too harsh for me. And if you see here too, it was pretty wet here and this started to dry. So I'm just going to blend it out because it's making a funky kind of pattern. I am creating a video on how to fix these issues if that's one of the issues you're having. But for now, just go over it again. Okay. And then the last couple sections, same thing. Do these two at once. Again, I don't know if you can see this, but this part is really wet and this has already started to dry, so it's getting that rough edge. In those instances, like it happens, just wash off your brush, dry it, and then blend it out, okay? Take that wetness and add it to that dry bit, okay? It happens, it happens to me a lot, like it just did, but if that happens, just take that wet part and move it to the dry area. So it's all kind of like the same level of wetness. Like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna let this dry before we do the detail and the inner part. And we're gonna move back to this painting. So it is not completely dry yet. So I am just going to do the ground again because it's okay if it bleeds a bit. Just gonna add that dark ground. Just to sharpen it up a bit. And I think it's almost wet enough that I can do some trees. Okay, so I'm just gonna take my black and I'm just going to do, yeah, the sky is pretty much dry. I'm gonna do some black trees because they're just gonna be some silhouettes of the trees. Okay, and if it does bleed a bit, that's fine because you want it to kind of look extra spooky anyway. You can have some of the trees coming in front of the, <clears throat> the moon. Doing some thinner branches as it moves over. Okay, maybe someone's in the background or off to the side. Using the tip of your brush to get those thin lines. OK, 
Okay, so if you can see right here how it's kind of like, if they're not sharp lines, it's because the background here is not completely dry. So you should get sharper lines like this if it's drier. So if you really, really want to wait, <laughs> then wait. Or if you have a heat tool, you can do that too. I'm impatient and I'm on a time limit here. So I just want to show you how to do this. Okay. All right. Like that. Now we are going to wait for it to completely dry before we do the spooky ghosts. Okay, so I'm actually going to take my heat tool just around the eyes and the mouth so I can do the detail there. Okay, so I edited it, but it took about 30 seconds to just dry around the eyes and the mouth. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take some yellow or even yellow ochre if you like. And you are just going to paint the inner corners of these eyes, the little sections we made, okay? Because this is acting as the inner part of the pumpkin. So when you cut it, that, that little bit. that. Um, I actually might add a bit of darkness, maybe a bit of brown shading, just like a tad bit. Okay, now I'm going to do the stem. I add a bit of black to that stem. Now I'm going to wait for those yellow parts to dry before I do the inner part. So while that's drying, I'm just going to do yeah the stem and some detail around. So I'm just going to wash off my brush. So it's a really, really light wash of this brown. I'm just going to go over those lines again to just make them a bit more sharper. But I'm also going to blend it out. So I just washed off my brush. I'm just going to try and blend those lines out a bit. I don't want them too, too sharp. Wash it off, blend it out. Wash it off, blend it out. Just trying to get that darkness in those crevices of the pumpkin of like each little section without making it super dark and sharp. So that's why we blend it out with clean water on our brush. Like that. like so, okay? I'm just checking to see if those yellow bits are dry and they are. So now I'm gonna go in with black and I'm gonna go around. And I'm gonna fill in those white areas. Okay. Already it looks pretty creepy.
So you'll definitely need a smaller brush to do this part. Just because you need to be precise with how you're, you know, painting the eyes. Same with the mouth. I'm using a size four. that and then I'm just gonna take a light wash of brown and I'm just gonna go around the eye so you can see those extra little bits okay I'm kind of dragging the black around too. It's all good. Like that. And there is your spooky jack-o'-lantern. So that one's done. And this one, we just need to wait for it to dry. So I'll come back when it's completely dry and we will paint our ghost. Okay, so now that it's completely dry, we're gonna take our white ink and I probably should have cleaned my water, but I didn't. So we're gonna deal with that. Um, and I'm just gonna put some water on my brush, put it in my white ink and ghosts are either white, but they're transparent, right? So we're gonna use, I'm just gonna go around it. Sorry, around with my white ink to create the shape of the ghost. This one's gonna kind of have like a, a hood. That makes sense, okay. And then I'm gonna wash off some of that and I'm going to just use a lighter wash of the white so it's transparent. See how that happens? And I'm gonna go over that whole area She did not do the shape that I wanted to. There we go. Just fill it all in with that lighter wash of the white ink. I keep wanting to dip it in my watercolor palette. No. Okay. I'm just going to fix the shape. So that's like the lighter wash of the white. Now I'm gonna take more paint. So there's more white, it's gonna be more opaque. And I'm just gonna go around the edge again. Okay. Do some lines like that. Like so. go then you can wait for it to dry and do like black eyes so I'm just gonna dry it quickly with uh, my heat tool 
Okay, so it's dry. I'm gonna take some black and just do some black, little black eyes. Uh, maybe a mouth. Like that, and there you go. You have a spooky ghost in a spooky forest. There are your spooky Halloween ghost and jack-o'-lantern. Thank you all so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram for more. Have a great day, guys. Bye.